Look what he says. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. That's where Saul was. And laying hands on him. He laid hands. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. See, here is the problem. You want to be Stephen, you want to be Jesus, and you want to be Ananias. No, 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 no. You don't have to be the star of the show. Now, let me, let, let me back up here. This might throw you a little bit. Because in this right here, Jesus is not even the star. Saul is the star. That's who God wanted to change. Uh, Stephen didn't need changing. Jesus sure didn't need changing. Ananias didn't need changing. It was Saul that needed to be converted. So he uses. They got a spiritual restore. Yes, Lord. All right. But the fascination with fame does not allow us to fulfill our responsibility to a particular part. Come on. And in the conversion, even Jesus plays a part, fulfills a role. That's the power of glory in the second degree. When it's not you that God is trying to change, it's somebody else. What God want to do is use you in bringing about the transformation. But even when we're trying to get people to God, we're making like it's about me. Sometimes maybe the people, not y'all, but the people we witness to, they be like, is this about you or me? You ever been called to trying to help a person and, and, and you get to talking about your problem so much that the person you help starts saying, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> come on, y'all, talk to me. In other words, you probably come and bring me help. I done got inspired. Let me get a word from the Lord. Look, baby, it's going to be all right. You know, you're crying about your situation. You're probably coming to here to help me. You know what? Because you done got you done got so twisted up in your own thought. Now you're making it about you. But then you had this nerve to say, well, if he done it for me, he can do it for you, baby. Like, you need prayer. Let me pray for you. It's going to work out. I know, I know this didn't happen. Or the reverse. They get to talk about their problem. You be like, well, baby, it's going to work out. Listen. Oh. Uh, I got an appointment. Yeah. <laughs> and you come back and the Lord, yo, don't bring this spirit in my house right here. I'm already, I'm already having a problem. You gotta go and come back another day. I'm, I'm showing you how you, 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 can, you can get. So, Ananias, not, do you not think that Stephen could have done this, or God used Stephen, or God used Jesus uh, to have done this, but, but he did, each of them did their part and left the rest so that they wouldn't interfere with the next role that God had assigned. Yes. So it was, it was Ananias who God used mm. to lay hands on him to bring the scales from his eyes. Yes. Yeah. To fill him with the Spirit. And went on to say, and he baptized him. Immediately, mm -hmm. the scales fell from his eyes, or, or something fell from his eyes like scales. He received his sight at once and rose and was baptized. And immediately, he preached unto Christ in the synagogue, and so forth and so on. So, God used three people into this, however you want to say, the transact. It is right here. God used a supporting cast. That was Stephen, Jesus, and Ananias. That's the supporting cast. All of those had glory, but glory in the second degree, because it was about Saul being converted, not about them showing how great and wonderful they were. They were all missionaries that had a mission or responsibility. 
They are called the supporting cast to transact the transformation of Saul or Paul. Yes. He really didn't have to use any, but he chose to use all three. I think there's something in here. To see the power of, well, we, this is a common slang we kind of use, stay in your lane, mm -hmm. of understanding your lane. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Lord. I'm almost through. This was a supporting cast that God used. Whew. So that, that leads me to a few questions. Let me read the scripture, Romans 12. For as many of us, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. There it is. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having been gifts differing according to the grace that is given us, let us use them. Work according to the gift that God has given you. According to the assignment that God has given you. Perform the part that God has given you. Thank you, Lord. Great teacher. Mm. Amen. Here comes the role of questions that I just want to ask, and I, and I, and I think I got a scripture, and I'm going to be through. Come on, hold Do you know your role? Mm. Uh-oh. Are we in this whole play? The world is our stage. The world is our, I read somewhere a few weeks ago, we were talking about it in a session. Romans, where it talks about that the earth groans, waiting for the sons of God to, uh, when it says son, it's not a gender, it's really children of God, to take their rightful place so that it can be delivered from its bondage. Mm -hmm. Talking about creation, all creation gone, mm -hmm. waiting for the children of God to get into that place so that it can be delivered from its, its bondage. Mm -hmm. So creation, meaning all of the world, mm -hmm. is really designed by God to serve you. Mm -hmm. So what we do, medicine, take everything, it's designed to serve you. Mm -hmm. And Romans says, so creation is, is who's designed to serve you, is waiting for you to get into your place so that you can free it from its bondage. In other words, creation want to bless you, but you have to be in a certain place for it to release its blessings. Yes, yes, come on. Great teacher. Yes. And because we don't know our place, creation is saying, the earth is saying, I got stuff in me that God has put in me that's specifically for you, but I can't release it until you get into a certain place. So you're out of place, and because we don't know our place, we don't know our part, we don't know our role, creation is groaning from the pain of his inability to release the blessings that God has put in there to bless your life. And then I think in that part it says that the world is our stage, and creation has a part to play to release blessings. But every time it wants to release blessing, because you don't know your part, you keep missing your line. And because you're missing your line, creation can't deliver its part. Lift your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!